Now it can be really fun when you sit down to tie a new and pretty challenging pattern and it comes out looking great. <laughs> That's not really going to happen today, but stick around. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Why am I laughing so hard? How do I suck? <sighs> Calm down. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Now, the pattern I'm talking about today, uh, David Richardson asked me if I could tie a day's hopper for him. And I haven't tied one of these in a couple of years. And honestly, the hoppers I've used lately are just the foam bodies and rubber legs, maybe a little bit of crystal flash in them. So I told David I would give this pattern a shot. Now, I haven't done it in a couple years, and I knew it was a challenging pattern, and it really is. But before we get into it, let's talk a little bit about the history of this thing. The Dave in the name is Dave Whitlock, but the pattern really didn't uh, originate with him. It originated with one called the Michigan Hopper, created by Art Winnie from Michigan uh, in the 1920s. And Joe Brooks made the fly popular in the 1950s, so it kind of became Joe's Hopper. Now, apparently, Dave Whitlock wasn't real happy with how the, the pattern performed, so he took a Joe's Hopper and a Muddler Minnow, kind of combined them with a big deer hair head and the, the deer hair collar on it, but apparently that wasn't enough. A guy named Jay Butler from Jackson, Wyoming said, hey, let's add some legs to this thing. So putting the deer hair head on it and the legs on it, it pretty much became Dave's Hopper and it's the fly we know now. And it is pretty much the most well-known and most successful grasshopper pattern out there. But again, it's not the easiest fly to tie. So I was gonna sit down and tie half a dozen of these tonight just for my fishing this year. And I was kind of debating how important is the, the turkey quill wing on it. And I was thinking you might be able to skip it, but I've, I've had a change of heart. I think it's pretty important. After looking at a few pictures of grasshoppers, I think we really need this turkey wing on it. But also keep in mind, the one you're about to watch, I kind of messed up this wing on it. What you might want to do is trim the palmer hackle on the top just a little bit shorter than I did so that you could get that turkey wing laying a little flatter. And the one you're about to see, I've got the wing sticking up a little bit. And, and the next ones I tie, I'm going to make sure I get the wing down. And then the head. The heads on these things are, are challenging. If you like that big square blocky head, uh, yeah, just you know, spend some extra time trying to get that thing right. But it's a pretty fun pattern to tie. And I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there you go in the vise, a Dave's Hopper. Now this is not the easiest pattern in the world to tie. It's, there's just really a lot going on. And common sizes for this are six, eight, and 10. Really just whatever you tie your hoppers on. I'm tying this on an eight. And I'm gonna go ahead and use a, a hopper hook. So a curve shank hook and yellow thread. Now, I'm using a 70 denier, probably not the smartest thing, but the one I just tied, it worked, so I'm gonna stick with it. Start your thread about a third of the way back and lay a base down to where the barb of the hook would be. Okay, I think that's fine right there. Now let's tie in a tail. Some red hackle fibers, maybe a third length of the, of the body. It's not a huge tail, but it's not insignificant. So let's catch this in our hair. This is just cheap, strong saddle hackle too. So you want to go farther back? Maybe. Let's go one more turn back. Okay, that's going to look fine. Now I'm going to do some loose wraps just to help build this underbody, keep it a little bit thicker, and to where I get about up here to the, the two-thirds point, or the one-third going back. Let's go ahead and snip this excess here. Okay, now the yellow underbody. And I'm using McFlylon foam. Um, Dave Hughes, you know, mentioned yellow sparkle yarn. If you don't have this McFlylon foam, uh, use any kind of synthetic, uh, anything yellow. I probably wouldn't use a chenille because, you know, this is a dry fly and a chenille is just gonna hold too much water. So I'm gonna back my thread off a little bit, catch that in, now I can bury this right here. So we've got a lot going on up front, the front third. So let's just go ahead. Some open wraps. I'm not pulling this tight. I'm trying to build some bulk in this underbody. And we'll, we'll also do that by a couple of layers. So I'm just gonna fold this up right here. 
and then you know catch it in maybe on the far side of the hook right there and then this one let's see we'll we'll pull this bone back on my side of the hook that way we'll give a little bit of thickness and a little bit of width to the the fly as well okay so we've got two layers we're getting a thick enough body but uh, we'll see if, if it's going to work for us but before we tie in the hackle that we're going to palmer you want to create this little loop and i've seen a lot of a lot of them out there that did not have this but you know we've got the material we're here why not do it it adds about you know five seconds to the fly and i think it looks kind of cool okay so we've got our little butt loop right there just on top of the the red tail let's pull this out of the way and then catch in some brown hackle now you've got a lot of options here um, the smaller the hackle you use the less you're going to have to trim so i'm going to use a pretty small piece we will still have to trim a, a fair amount of this just because uh, we've got a lot you know we've got a turkey feather as well so um, and then you know the deer hair head so I'm going to just leave that stem and wrap it up right here so that's about where my threads hanging about where I'm going to stop the the body now let's just wrap this I'm going to take one full wrap behind this feather and now I'm just going to wrap it up here try to keep it smooth but you know what if you don't get it smooth don't worry about it now when you get up there is that a thick enough body um, maybe but let's just go ahead and take another uh, layer back and forward so we can really chunk this guy up a little bit you know grasshoppers are, are pretty fat bugs and yellow grasshoppers are probably even fatter let's go ahead and catch this off up here now let's just palmer this this brown up and how close together you want these i think it's up to you i've seen them where where it's really only like three or four wraps going up I think on this big size, what did I say, size eight? I think four wraps, probably five is gonna look best. So let's get this caught in right here. Let's go ahead and take a look at this hackle right here. I think we're gonna be in fine shape. Now, one thing you do wanna do, we're gonna trim the top. You might wanna trim the bottom, but I don't think it's as necessary. We're gonna trim the top because we are putting turkey feather on it. So I'm kind of trimming it shorter at the front and then a little bit bigger toward the back. I'm doing that on the, the top and a little bit on the sides because I don't want it to push my turkey feather too high up. Now, speaking of turkey feathers, just mottled brown about maybe a little bit more than a hook gap wide. We're going to fold it over on itself, kind of fold it in half. And before I tie it on, I want it to be fairly long, but I'm going to go ahead and trim the tip. See that right there? So just kind of um, getting it at a little bit of an angle. And I'm going to try to lay it on there fairly flat. If I can get it to hold that position right there, I'll be happy. A couple of medium wraps. Okay, I think that's going to look fine. Okay, let's go ahead and bury these butt ends just to give us a little smooth base where we're going to put this deer hair next. Now, for the deer hair, um, take a, a fair size clump to begin with. Oh, no, wait, wait, we've got legs. I've, I've forgotten the legs on these things before, too. And <laughs> this, you don't want to forget these. These are kind of the one of the hardest things about this fly making these legs to begin with so just three or four pheasant tail fibers tied in a knot and then snip the tip off and i'm going to catch it in one at a time i'm going to do um, the side closest to me first and i want it to be angled a little bit down we'll see if we can make that happen two wraps right here 
get it situated okay now a tight wrap see that leg coming off to the side and a little bit down now let's do one on the, the far side and the same thing right here just kind of lay it on there a couple of medium wraps and then check it how are we looking I think those legs look fine now a few tighter wraps going forward to really lock them in now we can snip off the butt ends and spend a few other wraps just to smooth up this front third of the hook now we're ready for the deer hair so take a, a fair sized chunk of deer body hair put it in your stacker and I stacked this before I started this video so if you think I can stack deer hair with three little wax um, don't think I'm a magical deer hair stacker and I tied this with a, um, a natural and then this bleach and I think the bleach looked just a little bit better so I'm going to catch it in with about halfway see this with my the, this is going to be the collar so I'm going to grab it pretty tight with my material hand but not a real tight thread wrap just one or two medium wraps and now I have not let go of it with my material hand but I'm going to pull it tight and then zigzag it through a little bit I want the the collar to be just on the top See that? And it's still on the top, but all this right here, this front part, that's kind of spun around on me. And that's what I want. So I'm just going to pull this back, get my thread a few turns in front of it, and I'm just going to push it, push it back right there. Try to pack it a little bit with my, with my thumb. Okay. Now take one more chunk. Maybe this time just a little bit bigger if you can. Now here's a tip, before I, you know, snip it off of the hide, see if I can get this up there in the camera view, I will just go ahead and snip the tips off. You don't need to, st to stack this piece. So I've cut the tips off and now I can snip it off at the hide. And I've got a, a piece right here that's, you know, about an inch long. You do kind of want to take your comb and, and get out the, the under fur if you can. But let's just lay this on here like you would spin any deer hair. Put a loose wrap, two loose wraps, kind of right in the middle. And then the third one, let it spin around on you. Third and fourth. And then just work it up through there. Now, do we have room for one more? Uh, not on your life. So we're going to have to live with this. I'm going to pack this a little bit and then get my thread right up in the front of it. Try to get a little base so I can put a whip finish in. Okay, whip finishing these guys, it's kind of tricky. Grab your tool and then you're gonna have to kind of pull it back right here as you do it. And I'm gonna trap a couple of fibers right there but I'm gonna live with them because we got a big buggy head anyway. So I'll just slide my scissors right up that thread and then saw it off. Now you'd think we're almost done, but this part usually takes me the longest. Um, and I will start with a, a razor blade and my Stonfo tool here. And I'm gonna just snip it off at the bottom. Um, just kinda go right here. And I'm gonna speed this up. I'll do the bottom and then the sides, but I'm gonna do a, a combination of trimming. I'll do it with my razor blade and and my scissors just just so you don't cut off that collar going in the back So there we go. Spend a few minutes trimming your head till your liking. That's not a beautiful head, but this is still a fishable fly. So um, 
It's a fairly challenging pattern, and no matter how many times I think I tie this, I'm probably not gonna get it down to less than 15 minutes. But that's it, folks. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.